it's Steve, your Facebook friend, maybe more, broadcasting from historic Alexander Park near downtown Branson, Missouri. And this is where the soccer practice is on. Fast Johnny Ray's over there in soccer practice, so that's why I'm here, and you're my company. But I wanted to share with you something that my son uh, shared with me after I got him from school before practice as we drove here. They're getting ready for a big music program. I think it's in November. Um, and they're going to have the kids uh, dress up as famous Missourians. And they're doing a music program based on Missourians and things that involve Missouri. You ever heard that song, Kansas City? Let me shut this radio down. It goes, uh, Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. You know the song. Wilbert Harrison had the biggest hit with it in like May of 1959. The song was actually written, get this, 70, maybe 71 years ago by, uh, oh God, I can't remember the songwriter's name, Stiber and Jerry Stiber and I can't remember the name of the other guy. It will come to me in a minute. It makes no difference. The most famous version is by Wilbert Harrison. And they're going to do this song. So I'm really excited about it. I like the song. I had the opportunity to do it on stage. Uh, I didn't sing it, but I had the opportunity to play it on stage a few times. Uh, and uh, I just like the song, right? Now, Wilbert Harrison nor the songwriters are Missourians, but they were trying to pay homage to Kansas City's rich jazz history. And they refer in this song to 12th Street and Vine. Now today, it's the 18th and Vine area that is what they refer to as the jazz district. And uh, pretty neat. I got to catch some live music there in my years of living there. Met a few musicians and never played there. But as a, uh, as a uh, patron, uh, we were able to hear some great jazz music. Anyway, anyway, so the little boy tells me, yeah, we're going to do that song, Dad, but, but uh, it's not the words that you and I know. Teachers got to change the words so we don't offend anybody. Kansas City? Kansas City, here we come. <laughs> what words are in this song that will offend anyone? Johnny, you, are, there, are there bad words in that song that I don't remember? No, Dad, she just doesn't want anyone to be upset. I said, okay, well, being one who pretty much just listens to music and has a horrible habit of just making up my own words as I go, I listen to, to rhythms and textures and chord progressions and the hook, of course, and, and uh, it's, it's not uncommon for me to, to look at the lyrics of a song that I thought I was singing for 30, 40 years and, oh, is that what they're talking about? Because I don't listen to lyrics. So tonight, while we were waiting for John to eat a little something, to come to a soccer practice, I did review the lyrics. And uh, I had no surprises. It does talk about this, uh, the person who originally wrote this song, said they were gonna go to Kansas City because they've got crazy little women there on the street corner. And he's gonna get him one. And he's gonna stand on the street corner there at 12th Street and Vine with his woman and a bottle of Kansas City wine. Okay. Well, <clears throat> all the crazy little women standing on the street corners, I get it. I guess now at, uh, what am I, 63 and a half, over almost 64 years old, I guess he's talking about getting, well, girls that are hanging out on street corners to be his companion. They're gonna stand on the street corner and drink wine. So, okay, I know we live in this kind of woke, uh, you know, uh, this kind of woke uh, environment, society, is that the word I'm looking for? Um, so I can see where the teacher may not want to offend anybody, but I'm here to tell you, there is music on the radio that's talking about much worse. There is uh, primetime TV that has music and language that's much, much worse about a guy going to Kansas City to get one of them crazy little women and they're going to stand there and drink some wine together. I mean, uh, so anyway, anyway, that, my vote would be to not mess with a classic because the lyrics uh, are very, uh, they very eloquently paint a picture of what life was like 
in the, in the Kansas City jazz scene. A whole song was written to pay homage to the Kansas City jazz scene in the 40s and the early 50s. Um, and it painted a, a very clear picture of what it was like. Now, that's all long before my time. A matter of fact, Wilbur Harrison, did I mention this? Wilbur Harrison uh, has the most memorable version, the recording of that song. It came out in the year before I was born. I was born in January of 60. He recorded it in May of 59. Even though the song was written in like 52, 53, so it's 70 years old. And, it, and Wilbur Harrison is not the first one or the last one to record it. He just has the most memorable version. And it's hard not to think of the song Kansas City without also thinking about Wilbur Harrison. So anyway, uh, by the way, in 1965, the Beatles did a version. If you, if anyone uh, hadn't heard the, uh, you know, the jazzy rhythm and blues, early rock and roll version by Wilbur Harrison of Kansas City, the people buying Beatles records in the 60s then heard of Kansas City. To this day, a lot of people think Kansas City. They think it's a Beatles song. <laughs> it's not. But anyway, so uh, they're going to change the words. I'm going to be really interested as to see how she modifies the words because Lord knows we don't want to offend anybody and uh, so what are your feelings on that I don't know I think music period music like that it's kind of like uh, a living history museum it gives people some insight as to what life used to be like back in the day before we existed there are a lot of things in our history in this country that are sad and, and uh, I'm not even talking about slavery, and, and that's sad, horrible, sad. But things like children working in factories and coal mines. My own relatives, uh, my the little younger brothers of my own paternal grandmother went with my great granddad into the coal mines. I remember, uh, I wish I could remember which brother it was. Uh, you wouldn't know him anyway, but uh, he was so small that as he carried his lunch bucket, it would drag on the ground. And he would go in with his dad, and the boys would all work with their father mining coal near Bevere, Missouri. So, uh, as we look back on it now, knowing about black lung and how horrible that was for little children, uh, to not be able to enjoy being a child, but to be working in coal mines, uh, I consider that kind of a sad part of our history. But uh, we don't try and whitewash it and pretend it never happens. It happened. It's part of how we got to where we are today. Same way with this Kansas City song. We can whitewash it and say that, well, he's going to Kansas City to pick some flowers or whatever. We can whitewash it or we can let the song be and paint the picture and appreciate where we've been as a society and, and like that. By the way, several years ago, I, I spent, uh, God, how many years did I spend there? Uh, I started working in Kansas City when I was 40. And uh, well, I left in my late, mid, mid-50s. So I was there for 15 years. Uh, I didn't always have a full-time residence there, but I had a presence in Kansas City for a decade and a half plus. And one afternoon, I went over to the Jazz District, which nowadays is 18th and Vine. But I was looking for 12th Street and Vine, because that's where he was going to get his crazy, crazy little women and his bottle of Kansas City wine and stand on the corner 12th Street and Vine, and I couldn't find it, and I kept driving and driving, and I finally figured out that it's under the eastbound lane of I-70, <laughs> so it doesn't exist anymore, but if you look on the internet, and I just found this out tonight when I went to review the lyrics before I made this video, there is a park there that I don't think was there when I was exploring to commemorate the spot of 12th Street and Vine. It's shaped like a grand piano, and there are bricks that form a treble clef. Uh, and uh, kind of pays homage to the song and to the actual spot of Cross Street and Vine, which apparently was the original jazz area of Kansas City, even though today it's 18th Street and Vine. So <clears throat> I'm going to go, when I'm in Kansas City again and have time, I'm going to go find this park, and I'm going to figure out, they say it's right where Cross Street and Vine was. I don't think it is. But I will look at that again, uh, because that spot, at least... The spot that, as we speak about it, has been made famous because of this song that is now 70 years old. Unless we keep changing the words. <laughs> and we lose the entire meaning of the song. Anyway, that, well, that's a message I have tonight. 
And uh, I guess I'll continue to sit here and watch my little boy soccer play and listen to some 50s rock and roll. Some coasters. Have a good night.